Session six, we have Adam Shaw with Stack All the Things, a deep dive into UI stack view. <coughs> Our fine Adam here, he has been developing iOS apps since the dawn of time, AKA 2008. He's an Apple nerd through and through and he loves sharing his knowledge and enthusiasm for iOS app development with others. Who would be us? Aren't we lucky? So, well, please welcome Adam. Thanks, Vicki. <laughs> Uh, so yes, uh, my name is Adam Shaw. I am an iOS developer, and I'm going to give a talk about UI Stack View called Stack All the Things, a deep dive into UI Stack View. So I'd like to start with a little story. This is a story about a boy and a UI View subclass. Now this boy, he's been around the block a little bit. He's been seen with other UI View subclasses, text views, collection views image views. Rumor is last spring he had a little fling with an activity view. It was exhausting. Um, but once he met this new UI view subclass, he forgot all the rest. And he wanted to use this new UI view subclass in all his projects and as often as he could. <coughs> yes, it's true, in a very short amount of time, this boy had fallen in love. Now, like all good stories, there's a little twist at the end, and you probably didn't see it coming. This boy, it's me. <laughs> and this UI view subclass, yes, is UI Stack View. So today I'm going to tell you about my love story with UI Stack View and hope that you fall in love with it the same way that I have. So UI Stack View, let's talk about it. It was introduced way back in iOS 9, but I know a lot of people still haven't had a chance to really use it very much. It is a container view for laying out a uh, stack of views, either vertically or horizontally in a column or row. And the really cool thing about it is that it handles all the layout of its contents for you without you having to create any explicit auto layout constraints. Oh yeah, and it's awesome. How awesome? You may not be convinced yet, so let me show you a little demo. So here I have something, a project already created and a UI view controller in Interface Builder. And I've already kind of set it up just with a view and a stack view, a vertical stack view already there. So let's see how easy it is to build a layout using stack view. Well, in Interface Builder, it's super easy because you can just drag things into it. So say we have a, a layout with a, you know, some sort of title, some sort of caption. Yes, these are pre-created views that I've already set up before the demo, but it's still the same idea. A little uh, text view and then a button. So this is pretty cool. I now have a completely valid layout, haven't had to do anything with auto layout constraints explicitly, and uh, it was pretty easy and straightforward. So let's build it and run it just to prove that I'm not lying, that it's not completely fake. Building, running. Now you, that's how you know I'm not faking it, is how long it's taking. Um, okay, so, and there you go, there it is. So that's pretty cool. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, well, that's great if I have really simple you know, layouts that's just a simple stack of things. But no, you can use UI Stack View for a lot more complicated things. Here's an example. I have this example of like a, you know, say you have a recipe app. So um, this is a page that shows a recipe for delicious tacos. I really wish I could have some tacos right now. And uh, you can see, you know, it's, it's not like super complex, but it's, it's pretty realistic. You know, it's, it's not, doesn't look like just a stack of stuff, but this entire layout was done using UI stack view, nested UI stack views. Let me show you how that happened. Oops. Oh, I should have tapped that before I started the demo. So this is that screen and it is a stack of views. But then look at this, uh, this second section with the delicious tacos. It itself has a nested stack view in it of three items. And then the section where it says 145 reviews, 95% would make it again. That is a horizontal stack view of two sections. And then each one of those 
is another stack of labels. And if you looked at this in Interface Builder, you'd see nothing but you know, a scroll view, UI stack views, and labels and images, and no, 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 nothing else. So you can, you can kind of do very complicated things, and once you start using UI stack view a lot, um, you know, what happens is you, you start uh, envisioning all different ways that you can implement your layouts using UI stack view. Okay, that's pretty cool, Adam, but you know, I can do that same thing using auto layout constraints, right? Why should I use UI stack view? What advantage does it give me? Well, let me tell you. Basically, it's a simpler way to specify your layout. Uh, if you have a, you know, a layout where you have a view and a, something that's logically a stack of things in it, you can use auto layout constraints, right? We've all done this. You, you pin everything to the edges. Um, and this is great, but that wor and that works, but that's, once you've done that, you've sort of lost the context of the fact that it's a stack, right? Now it's just a bunch of views with a bunch of constraints. And, and maybe in this simple case, you can tell what it's supposed to be, but with more complicated layouts, um, it becomes a little more difficult. When really, we're just thinking of it as, you know, it's a stack of views. That's how we want to think of it, so UI stack view is a, you know, more appropriate choice. Another, oh, sorry. I uh, should mention again, yes, that you can have nested UI stack views to do more complicated layouts. The other thing, and this is the thing I really love about UI stack view, is it's much easier to change an existing layout. Um, we've probably all had this happen. We have, you know, say you set up the layout using constraints like this, and then uh, your boss tells you, uh, we're, we're going to get rid of this middle item, right? So you go into interface building, you delete it. Well, now you have sort of an, an invalid layout and you have to go and manually kind of move things around and add another constraint right in the middle. And this again is a simple example, but you probably all dealt with complex examples where you're moving something from one sub view over here to another sub view over here. And as soon as you do that interface builder, like half of your constraints all disappear and you have to painstakingly reset everything up. With, uh, with UI stack view, it's a lot simpler. And let me show you an example of that. I'm gonna go back to this, uh, this demo I did. So say that uh, you, know, you, you built this app and it's pretty cool, but your designer comes to you and says, you know what, we wanna try moving this caption down below this piece of text. Well, you just take it and drag it and Boom, you're done. You haven't had to break any constraints or set anything up. You just sort of you reordered them in the stack. And over here, you can see uh, this is the order that the things are, are put in the stack. Um, what about something a little more complicated? What if you're told, well, what we really want to do maybe is move this caption over here to the right of the title. Well, that's still pretty straightforward. We can do that by nesting a horizontal stack view in there. Let me find it. Here's the horizontal stack view. And I'm just going to put it right at the top there. And I'm going to put the title in there. And I'm going to put the caption in there. And again, now done. You know, very valid layout. I made that change very easily. Um, and you, other changes, you know, you decide, oh, no, let's put the caption back where it originally was. Let's try the button up there. You know, done, it works. So one of the cool things about UI Stack View is how, how flexible it is to, to change things later. Um, a, a lot more flexible than if you were using auto layout constraints, uh, especially in Interface Builder. Um, another thing I like about it is it's sort of an alternative, what I call UI table view abuse, right? We're all guilty of this. We see a layout like this and we think, Ah, that's kind of a table, right? We could sort of divide it into cells and it works. We've all done this. It's not the worst thing in the world, but is this layout really a table? Well, we've all, we can tell ourselves it is, but it's, it's not really a table in the, in the way that I think UI table U was intended to, to, to be used. And so um, this is much more you know, appropriate as, as a stack view perhaps. So I want, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the properties of UI Stack View. You know, basically, what are the cool things we can do with it? A reminder, um, UI Stack View is a UI View subclass, which means it inherits most of the things that you can do with a regular UI View. But that's not that interesting. So let's talk about the things that are specific to UI Stack View. 
Um, there's a property called array subviews, and this is kind of the heart of the UI stack view. Array subviews is an array of UI views, and it represents the items that are in your stack. So in this case, the stack of three blue rectangles, there would be, it would be an array of three UI views, one for each rectangle. There are some helper methods to add, insert, and remove array subviews. And so it's pretty straightforward. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, Adam, you said that UI stack view was just a regular UI view subclass. And UI views, we already know that they have a subviews property, right? Why, why do you need this arranged subviews? Well, the reason is, is UI stack view does try to separate um, tracking the views that are part of the stack from just regular subviews. You could, for example, have you know, some image of a star in the upper left corner, and that would be a regular subview, but because it's not in your stack, it's not one of the arranged subviews. And in this case, you would have to use explicit constraints if you wanted to like pin it in the upper left corner. Um, axis is another property that just lets you control whether it's a vertical stack view or a horizontal stack view. Spacing controls the spacing between the elements in the stack. Layout margins controls the margins around the edges of the stack. It kind of will inset the content. Actually, layout margins is a um, property on regular UI view. You've probably used it before, but uh, just letting you know that UI stack view will, uh, will adhere to the layout margins. But you do have to set this is layout margins relative arrangement to true. I don't know, I don't know why, but it's, it's a fact. Uh, Distribution is another property. This one's a little hard to explain all the different cases, but what distribution is, is it controls the way that your elements in the stack are laid out relative to the direction of the axis. So if you had a vertical stack, it's the way things are laid out vertically. These are the possible values. I'm not gonna go into too much of an in-depth explanation because we don't have time, but uh, a quick summary, fill and fill proportionally. Uh, what they will do is they will fill the stack with the items, meaning if they need, it needs to kind of uh, enlarge some of the items to fill the stack, it will, or if it needs to compress some of the items to fill the stack, it will. Uh, fill proportionally will do that proportionally based on the original sizes of the elements in the stack. Fill will use the, uh, what is it, the uh, content hugging and compression resistance priorities. Fill equally is similar, but it will try to force all the elements in the stack to have the same height in the case of a vertical stack view. Equal spacing and equal centering, uh, instead of prioritizing the size of the elements themselves, it prioritizes the spacing between them and it might still you know, resize elements to try to match that spacing. There's an alignment property. This controls the way the elements in the stack are aligned in the opposite direction of the of the stack view axis. So we can center the elements. If we do fill, it will try to, in the case of a vertical stack view, it'll try to stretch them all to, to fit the width. Specific to vertical uh, UI stack views, leading and trailing will pin things to the leading and trailing edges. And specific to horizontal stack views, top and bottom will pin to the top and bottom edges of the stack. First baseline and last baseline are similar, but they're specific to the cases where you have uh, text-based UI views as the arranged subviews, like a label or a, a text view, um, in which case it will align the baseline of either the first line or the last line in the text. And uh, I should mention all of these properties you can, you can do in uh, storyboards as well. I kind of showed you the, the code version. But there's even more cool stuff that I want to tell you about. And one of the cool things I really like about UI stack view is the fact that you can change all, these, all this content and all these settings dynamically at runtime. So, you know, the UI stack view will automatically update its layout based on the things that you change. So, for example, if you add or remove things at runtime, it will show them on the screen with the, with the new items. Uh, properties can be changed uh, at runtime to allow dynamic changes. And uh, a really cool um, 
special thing to know about is this is hidden property uh, and how it affects the, the items in the arranged uh, subview array. So normally uh, with a regular old view is hidden, um, you know, it's a, it's a property on every view and what it does is it just kind of prevents the view from drawing itself, right? Uh, and, but normally it still leaves its frame there, right? The frame is still there for the purposes of layout. Well, if a view is an arranged subview in a stack, is hidden uh, takes on a little extra meaning. And what it does in this case is it not only doesn't draw the element, but it kind of, the best way to describe it is it, it, remo it removes it from consideration when it computes the, the stack. It almost treats it as if it's not even in the arranged subviews in the first place without having to actually remove it from your arranged subviews. So it's a really cool way of, you know, you might set up lots of things in your stack and you want to just hide something at runtime dynamically, you can just set its is hidden flag and it's as if it was not there. And um, most of these values, you can connect them to, you know, uh, to size classes. So demo time after a drink of water. Okay. So back to the simulator. So let me show you some of these things. Um, dynamic hiding. We talked about how you could hide things dynamically. Let's pretend you have, this is part of our recipe app, say, and maybe uh, you know, not every recipe has nutritional information. So this nutrition info button, you don't always want to show it. So you know, here's, here I've kind of simulated that by showing that you can hide it very easily. But how did I actually do that? Well, I can do that in one line of code. And that line is right here. Is that big enough? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so all I've done is I've, I've toggled the is hidden flag on this uh, nutritional info button, and that was enough to make it uh, disappear. And, you know, again, if this was just a regular UI view and you had set is hidden, you know, this, this blue button would have disappeared, but these other two buttons wouldn't have suddenly, you know, gotten uh, moved up in, in place, but because it's a arranged sub view in a UI stack view, that's how it works. It's pretty neat. Another example, dynamically uh, adding and removing tacos. I mean, arranged sub views. Uh, sorry, I really want tacos. Um, so yeah, I can do this dynamically at runtime. Again, I'll show you how that's done. It's pretty easy. It's not one line of code, but still pretty straightforward. Here's the code where I add a taco. I just am creating a new taco image view and then I'm calling add arrange subviews on my stack and that adds it to the end. Removing a taco, a little more involved because I have to find the last element because that's the one I want to remove. I remove my arrange subview, but also I explicitly remove it from the super view. Now, why is that? Well, when you add an arrange subview, to a stack, it automatically adds it as a regular subview because it, it has to in order to, to show it. Um, but when you remove an arranged subview from a stack, it doesn't remove it as a regular subview um, unless you explicitly do so. So that's important to keep in mind. More fun examples that don't involve tacos. Um, Dynamic layout. Here I've just set something up, similar screen, but in this case I'm showing um, changing the spacing at runtime. Again, pretty easy. I've just set the spacing property based on the value of the stepper. One line of code. One line. I also have an example here where I'm changing the direction of the axis, horizontal to vertical. Now, obviously, in this case, horizontal, it's not appropriate because these buttons are, the text is too long. But actually, when I was doing this, this got to me to, to thinking, uh, you know, in this app, maybe I want to support landscape mode in addition to portrait. And as you know, in landscape mode, your vertical space is more limited. And maybe you wouldn't want to stack these buttons vertically in landscape mode, right? Because that's, you know, it, it just might not fit. And so what I really want to do is have it so in landscape mode, maybe then it stacks it horizontally, but in portrait mode, it stacks it vertically. And so that's what I've set this up to do already. Pretty cool. And guess how many lines of code that took? 
Well, if you guessed one, you're wrong. It's actually zero lines of code because you can do all of this in Interface Builder. Let me show you. So here is that view controller. Let me get rid of this stupid debug stuff. So here's my stack view. Here are the properties sheet in Interface Builder. So here is where I define my axis, and I've used size classes to say, well, normally I want it to be a vertical stack, but if it is a compact height, which on the iPhone landscape it is, then I want it to be horizontal. And just by setting that, I magically got the buttons to rearrange uh, depending on the, the orientation. And one more thing about these demos that's really cool is that almost all the properties can be animated. So here, you know, I had this toggle nutrition, which just makes it pop disappear. But I have this little switch, which will now animate the same thing. And I can do that here to animating the spacing or, or that. How do I do that? Well, it's as easy as you might imagine. You just wrap it in a regular UI view animate call. So in this case, remember this line of code is where I was toggling the hidden and it's in this function toggle nutritional info hidden and that's being called here. If the animate switch is on, I just uh, have it in an animate block and I call it in the animate block and it, it animates the, the hiding of it. So uh, I've shown you a lot of examples in storyboards, but you can do a lot of the stuff in code. I'm not going to go through it all in code, but just to give you an example of how easy it is to create a stack view, I mean, it's really straightforward. You just create it and start adding subviews to it, and you can also set the properties right in code. Um, there's not really a, a trick to it. I should talk a little bit about UI stack view and how it works with auto layout, because I've been emphasizing, uh, you know, if you use stack views, you don't have to create auto layout constraints. Isn't that awesome? And it is, but you might be wondering, well, how does it work with auto layout then? You know, I have some stuff that is auto layout. How does it work with my UI stack views? Well, the answer is it works seamlessly. And let me tell you why. Well, despite the fact that UI stack view can do very magical things, it is not actually using literal magic to accomplish what it does. Instead, it is actually creating auto layout constraints internally on your behalf. And so that's how it does its own layout, is it's creating constraints internally to do everything it does. Um, these constraints are kind of not meant for you to mess with or look at, but it is doing it. And so it's using auto layout already. Um, so everything is auto layout all the way down still, and so everything just kind of works together. Okay, now. Despite my true love for UI stack view, um, you know, not every relationship's perfect, and there are some gotchas. Um, UI stack view is a container view only. It only performs layout, and it doesn't render anything itself, unlike a regular UI view. Even though it is a UI view subclass, it is a kind of a special kind that only does the layout. Now, why am I telling you this? Who cares? Well, you will care because you'll soon find out that things like the background color property doesn't have any effect on a UI stack view. The UI stack view always is a clear background because again, the UI stack view doesn't, doesn't render itself. It only lays out its subviews. Similarly, uh, draw rect isn't ever called on it. So if you were to uh, subclass a UI stack view for whatever reason and implement draw rect, it would have no effect. And any of the cool layer effects that we might like to use, like the rounded corners or shadows or outlines, also can't be applied directly on a UI stack view. You can still do it on the contents of the UI stack view, just not on the stack view itself. Um, if you do want to do these kind of things, though, it's not that big of a problem. You can just embed your stack view in a regular UI view, and uh, then you can apply those effects to the regular UI view. It's a little annoying because you're making your view hierarchy a little deeper than it needs to be, but you know, it's, it's, it's worth it. Also, constraint conflicts. Well, I mentioned that UI stack view is creating constraints 
uh, internally to, to manage the stacks, but the, the, your, the items in your arranged subview might have their, your own con their own constraints, and external to your UI stack view might have its own constraints. And since you don't really have any say in the constraints that it's creating internally, you might end up with a, a constraint conflict. A very common one um, that I'll show you an example of is, um, you know, when you set is hidden to true, I talked about how it hides the arranged subview, but how does it do that? Well, it turns out it does that by adding a constraint on that item with a zero height. And if you have your own constraint for a height on that item, it, you're going to get a conflict. But you can often fix this by lowering uh, the constraint priorities on one, or more of, on one or more of your constraints. So let me show you this. It's not as bad as it sounds. I'm going to run this again. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this, this one where I could toggle the nutritional info button on or off. And when I toggle it, I want you to watch very closely to see something that may not have been apparent before. What happened? It's not in the simulator, but it's down here in the debug window. You can see that it's complaining about something. It's complaining about a constraint conflict. And what it is, is I see it's listed a UI button, nutritional info. That's my button. And it's saying, well, it has, it ha there's one constraint, a height of 40. Now, that's actually one that, that I did myself because I wanted all my buttons to have an explicit height. So let me show you what I mean. Yep, yeah, right here, height equals 40. I added that. And it's saying it conflicts with this other constraint. Again, it's the same button, but there's this height equals zero constraint. And there's this label UISV hiding. UISV is UI stack view, and it's telling, you know, it's giving us a hint that this is the one it uses to hide the button. And so um, it turns out that it, it, it resolved this by ignoring my height equals 40 constraint, which is why it did hide it. It does work, but it's something's not quite right still because we don't like gross uh, debug warnings in our, in our debug console. So in this case, I can fix this pretty easily by just changing the priority of my own constraint you know, to one less. I, in this case, I can think of it as I really want it to be 40 unless UI stack view really, really wants it to be something different, in which case I'll, I'll let it win, especially if, it, if the conflict is due to the fact that it's uh, hiding the button, because I do want it to hide the button. So uh, now I've made that change, and now when I run it, now when I toggle, yep, no, no more uh, console debug warning. So. It's something you should be aware of, and it is something you have to pay attention to, but in a lot of cases, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Next, um, very precise layouts are challenging in UI stack views. You know, I gave you an example of kind of a complicated layout, but some, some cases just are, are, are even more difficult. And the reason is, you know, UI stack view, again, it's not designed to let you decide exactly where everything is in your stack. You're, you're more giving, you're setting some properties, you are um, giving it some hints as how you want things to be laid out, but it's really in charge of that. So you don't get as fine control as you might be used to. So take this case, say I have a stack and say I really want those first two items to be spaced smaller, to, closer together than the second and third items. Well, in the current versions of iOS, there's no direct way to make that happen. You kind of have to do tricks like uh, nest the stack views so that the internal stack view has one spacing value and the external stack view has another spacing value. Um, however, just to let you know, in iOS 11, they actually did add this uh, set custom spacing function that in this case solves it because you can now set custom spacing between uh, different, uh, different views in the stack. Um, but, but still, in general, uh, some layouts are challenging. Here's another example of that. Uh, let's say I have uh, something where I have, you know, like a label specifying a full name and two buttons. And I want them laid out horizontally, so I think, ah, you know, uh, maybe I'll use a horizontal stack view. That sounds pretty cool. Well, I can do that, but 
there's no way to explicitly tell the stack view that I want the full name to be uh, pinned to the left edge, and I want the other two buttons to be pinned to the right edge. But there's still some ways we can kind of deal with this. Um, one, one thing that you might do is change the hugging and compression priorities of those items. And if you set the distribution to fill, which tries to force it to fill the available space with all the items, um, you can kind of make this happen. Um, by setting the content hugging priority of the full name to something lower than the other things, I forced it to kind of fill the space, but it did that by expanding the full name label. And because the label had an, a left alignment, uh, you know, uh, a left, uh, it was aligned to the left, the, the text aligned to the left, uh, it, I still got what I wanted. It's, it's not perfect, but sometimes you can, you know, do things like this to, to kind of have a little more precise control. And don't forget, you can mix and match uh, with regular uh, auto layout constraints. Uh, in this case, maybe you have a stack that you want to put sections of layout in a stack, but then inside the section you want more precise control, so you just use regular auto layout constraints for like the title, subtitle, and info. It's totally fine. So you can kind of mix and match for depending on the de degree of precise layout control you want. Another gotcha, performance. Um, performance, there's not, a, uh, there's not a significant problem with performance, but there's some things you, sh you should know about. Uh, changing certain things can cause new constraints to be added or removed, like if you add or remove new things into your range subviews. And constraints being added and removed is, you know, you take a little bit of a computational hit. Uh, also, these internal constraints that are created we don't know how they're set up. You know, they might actually be less efficient than if you were to create constraints yourself because UI Stack View has to handle the more generic case, right? And of course, the, the tendency to want to nest Stack Views to do more complex layouts makes this all the worse. Um, in my own experience, I haven't found it to be too bad, but one thing you should be warned about is you definitely want to avoid putting a stack view in a UI table view cell or a uh, collection view cell and trying to dynamically fill the stack as you DQ the cell. Because then you're, you're basically creating you know, new constraints as you're controlling, uh, as you're scrolling the uh, table view. And uh, I've tried this and it's not horrible, but you will see some stuttering and it's pretty obvious that things are not performing as you would hope. And finally, you know, it is iOS 9 or greater only. So if you need to support an earlier version, you're kind of out of luck. There are some open source alternatives that try very hard to um, mimic the exact syntax of UI Stack View. They, they're intended to be a drop-in replacement to use for older versions of iOS. I don't have any experience with them, but if you really love Stack Views and you uh, need to support older versions, you might look into that. So um, let's conclude our original story. So um, I still love UI Stack View, but we've decided not to have an exclusive relationship because I want to share UI Stack View with all my developer friends here at DevWorld and outside. And so you can all fall in love with UI Stack View as I have. And that is the end of my story. And that is also the end of my talk. And uh, I think I have Time for questions if anyone has any. Thank you. Oh, there we go. So James. It's, it's a lot like watch OS, right? Like the way you kind of lay it up similarly. Are there so I've used watch OS but not, not stack view? Is it are there significant differences that you probably should be aware of? Um, yeah, I mean, you're right. The, for those of you, uh, the question was like this, that this UI stack view uh, mechanism seems similar to the way you do layout on watchOS. Um, yes, it, 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 it's a similar idea. Watchos is kind of a, a stack-based layout. Um, I, it's been a while since I did watchOS stuff, but based on memory, I feel like watchOS maybe even has a little more flexibility in terms of how you can uh, lay things out. Uh, as I remember, 
watchOS letting me do things that seemed a little harder with just plain stack views. But it's, it's fundamentally the, the, the same idea. Anything else? Yes? When at the end, you mentioned uh, the performance hit in the table in the collection view. Yeah. Is that only when you've got the, uh, the special case of adding and using things randomly arranged subjects, or do you mean any using the role inside the um, In my own experience, it was only, I did do this either case where I was dynamically filling the stack. Um, I haven't noticed any performance otherwise. I know, I have heard some people say that they have. Um, in theory, it shouldn't be because as long as it's not, uh, as long as you're not doing anything to cause it to recreate constraints or do redo layout, it should just be like any other auto layout thing where you don't want to do that. So, uh, uh, so yes, I have not had bad experiences doing it. Because, for example, you might just, yeah, in your prototype cell and storyboard, you might already have two labels in your stack view, and all you want to do is change the text and the labels. I think that should be okay. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.